welcome to part two of the neck lecture. We're going to start talking about the larynx, and that is the passageway to the lungs, the air passageway to the lungs. So while the, the pharynx is the passageway to the esophagus, from the nose and mouth to the esophagus, the uh, larynx is the pathway in between the um, oropharynx and nasopharynx into the trachea. So uh, we're taking a look at the, it, all, it also contains the vocal cords. So the very top of the larynx is the hyoid bone. And the hyoid bone you can see here on CT, it's sort of a horseshoe shaped um, bone and it lets you know that you're just about at the beginning of the larynx. Um, as you can imagine and we've discussed before, you don't see it as well on MRI because you don't see bony anatomy well, um, but you can tell that you're in the area of the larynx and the hyoid bone because of the uh, velliculae and then you can see a little bit of the piriform sinus there on one side and here is the velliculae and the piriform sinus here on either side. So here are the cartilages of the larynx and this is where we start talking about the shapes of the cartilages and how this will help you in identifying uh, where you are at in a CT image. So we've got the hyoid bone up here and that is the very top of the larynx uh, with the epiglottis that sticks up just a little bit above that. And the epiglottis is leaf shaped. We talked about that a little bit before and you can see how it forms the shape of a leaf a little bit more pointy at the bottom and then wider um, as, it, as it goes through uh, superiorly and then a little bit more narrow again at the very top. And it's almost sort of tongue shaped in a way. And uh, the thyroid cartilage is below that and it forms the shape of a shield. Um, it's a little bit more triangular in shape, um, more narrow in the very anterior portion of it, and then as it goes laterally it becomes a little bit wider and thicker in the superior to inferior um, aspect. Um, but if you look at it from the posterior side, it, it kind of forms a triangle. It's a little bit more narrow in the front and then it widens as it goes out to the sides. It also has these uh, superior and inferior horns as it articulates with the um, uh, cartilages and bones above and below it. And then you've got the uh, cricoid cartilage, which is more circular, and people often compare it to the shape of a signet ring. A signet ring is a ring that's thicker on one side and then more narrow on the other as the cricoid is here. You can see um, in this image in the center. And then the retinoids are sitting uh, superior to the cricoid, um, like little fingers that stick off the cricoid cartilage and you can see that very well from this posterior image. Uh, here's the cricoid um, cartilage here and then the retinoids uh, are on top of or superior to the cricoid. They're also on the posterior surface of the cricoid. And then the um, corniculate are extensions off the retinoids. So they extend superiorly off the retinoid cartilages like little fingers. So I'm going to go back to the beginning and we'll talk about these in a little bit more detail. So the uh, epiglottis, which is leaf-shaped, we know that that extends up from the base of the tongue and it forms the anterior surface of the upper larynx. And we saw that in some of the previous images. It also is post posterior to the hyoid bone. Um, this is the anterior portion or the anterior shield of the hyoid bone and it is posterior to that in this anterior view. If you're looking from the posterior view, you see the epiglottis and you don't see that hyoid bone so that you know that it is um, posterior to the anterior surface of that hyoid bone. Um, the thyroid cartilage is the most dense. It's probably the easiest to identify on the axial images in CT. Um, it's two plates that are fused together. When you're looking at a CT image and you're coming um, through the superior slices of the larynx, at first you'll see this portion of the thyroid cartilage and it will look like two different bones and that it's not fused but that's because of this notch here in the in the uh, anterior surface of that thyroid cartilage 
but as you go more inferiorly, then you'll come into the area that is actually fused in the anterior portion and the more inferior portion of it. Um, the thyroid cartilage is superior to the thyroid gland, so don't get that confused when you're looking at CT images and you get to the thyroid cartilage. If you see something uh, to the lateral sides of it, it's not the thyroid gland. The thyroid gland sits inferior to the actual thyroid cartilage. Um, the cornua, or another name for horns, are these little extensions here on the lateral surface of the uh, thyroid cartilage. Um, they have uh, posterior, superior extensions, and then also inferior extensions that articulate with the cricoid cartilage. And the notch, again, I mentioned is superior. And the cricoid is in the shape of a ring, a signet ring, thicker on the posterior side and thinner on the anterior side. Remember not to get that confused. This looks like it might be a anterior surface as we're seeing some of the other uh, views. But if you'll notice this anterior view here, that is the more narrow band of the cricoid cartilage. And this posterior view here, that is the thicker band of the cricoid cartilage. So it is thicker on the posterior side where the arytenoid and corniculate cartilage come off and it is thinner on the anterior surface. And the arytenoids, they are on the posterior superior aspect of the cricoid cartilage. Uh, they're within the, the thyroid shield, so you can see in this image here, you're looking from the anterior surface and they have this thyroid shield a little bit um, like a see-through image so that you can see that cricoid cartilage, I'm um, sorry, the, um, the posterior side of the cricoid cartilage, but the arytenoids and the corniculates here, you can see that through the um, thyroid shield. And then from this view, the posterior view, you can see that they are within that uh, whole section of the thyroid cartilage. So the thyroid cartilage sits here and you would not be able to see um, the corniculates up above the thyroid cartilage or superior to them. They sit within that shield, um, just on the posterior surface of the cricoid cartilage. And the vocal cords connect between the arytenoids here and the uh, posterior thyroid cartilage here. So there you go. There's a, there's a vocal ligament here, and the vocal cords connect here and here, and we're going to see that when we study the vocal cords. When we know the shapes of the cartilage, we can begin to identify them on CT images much more easily. So knowing that the thyroid cartilage is a bit more triangular in shape, you can see that it's more narrow in the front, and then it widens as it goes posteriorly. So anteriorly it's more narrow, and posteriorly it's wider, forming sort of a, a, a triangle of sorts here. And then this, you're coming into the base of the cricoid, or base of the thyroid here, as you're getting into the cricoid cartilage. So as you go inferiorly, you touch on the base of the thyroid cartilage, and then the cricoid, the more circular cartilage, is inferior to the thyroid cartilage. And then one step further than that, you see uh, even more of the cricoid, but none of the thyroid now. And that's when you're just starting to get into the uh, thyroid, uh, thyroid gland, is inferior to the thyroid cartilage. Here's the thyroid gland coming into view here now. We can look at that cartilage again around the vocal cords. So when you're coming into the thyroid cartilage, again, you see that notch in the anterior portion. That means that we are at the very superior portion of the thyroid cartilage um, before you come to the anterior fused portion. And it's about that level when you start to see the false vocal cords. And you see them here in this picture as well. There's the notch and there's the false vocal cords. And they are superior to the true vocal cords. When you take a look at this image here from Netter's, and this is Netter's 5th edition, plate 78, you can see the false vocal cords or the ventricular folds here, and then the true vocal cords here. And so this image, you're looking at the uh, anterior portion here and the posterior portion, and this is um, 
as you look from lateral to medial, you'll see that they go superior to inferior. So they kind of sit at an angle um, like a V, but the V is in the, the more medial portion and then the, um, the, or the point of the V is at the more medial section. And then the uh, wings of the V are lateral and superior. So that's how the vocal cords sit within the larynx. So you see the false vocal cords here, about where you see the notch of the um, thyroid cartilage, and then where you see the thyroid cartilage fused, you see the true vocal cords, and they go forward and attach to the posterior side of the thyroid cartilage on the anterior border. So they go from the retinoid cartilage to the anterior the posterior surface of the anterior border of the thyroid cartilage. We're going to see that in the next slide and that will make a lot more sense. So the true vocal cords are the ligaments that stretch between the thyroid cartilage and that arytenoid cartilage. So thyroid cartilage on this side and arytenoids on this side. And the false vocal, vocal cords are the vestibular folds and they are superior to the true vocal cords. So in taking a look at those vocal cords again, here we have the thyroid cartilage, and this is the anterior portion, and this is the posterior portion. So this is the anterior um, notch that we're seeing here, and then the fused portion is inferior to that. And the arytenoid cartilages are here, and the uh, a corniculate as well, up at the top, the extensions here is a corniculate and you've got the vocal cords stretching from the, and these are the false cords here, the vocal cords stretching from the arytenoids all the way forward to the posterior surface of that anterior thyroid cartilage. So this is the thyroid cartilage here, this is the anterior surface, but it's that posterior border of that anterior surface. So I just want, don't want you to get confused there. But the arytenoids, uh, the cords stretch from the uh, arytenoid cartilage to the thyroid cartilage and these are the false cords and then you have the true cords there, the vocal ligament. And then when you take a look at it, this is just an interesting um, view from Netters of all the different motions that happen within our larynx. And so you have uh, the muscles that can uh, pull medially which causes the arytenoid cartilages to move laterally and that moves the cords away from one another and you've got several other motions here. You can take a look at those on your own time but I just wanted to show you this um, particular plate and I neglected to put the plate number here but I will do that when I redo this for your lecture um, for the actual study guide and then I just wanted to point out here too that the thyroid cartilage can also move anteriorly and inferiorly. So it can move, um, shift forward and down at the same time, anteriorly and inferiorly as well. So there's quite a few different motions that happen within our larynx to allow us to be able to talk and to sing and to breathe and to do all sorts of different things. And lastly, on the second portion of our neck lecture, we've got the trachea. And the trachea um, extends down from the level of the cricoid cartilage. So here you've got the thyroid cartilage and then that anterior border of the cricoid cartilage, which is more narrow in the front and thicker in the back because it's that sig signet ring shape. And then you've got the uh, tracheal rings and they go around the trachea protecting that airway as it goes down. And it is not a complete circle. So if you take a look at this picture from Netters, it is a ring of cartilage that goes almost all the way around. I'd say about two thirds or three quarters of the way around. And then it's got this soft tissue border on the back, this soft flexible um, border. And that is so that the esophagus has room to move and to um, uh, the muscles can contract when we swallow um, and when we move food down in the peristaltic motion of the esophagus. So the trachea has about 16 to 20 cartilage rings. Um, as I said, it's an incomplete ring with a soft tissue back for the esophagus. And when you look at it on the CT images, it's sort of an oval shaped 
Um, it can become a little bit more rounded depending on the patient habitus, but it's that shape. And these little thin lines here, these little thin white lines, those are the tracheal rings. And you've got the esophagus that's right here on the posterior side of the trachea. And then this is the uh, cervical vertebra.